After uploading my video on sticky scroll behavior in Figma, one of my viewers reached out to me and sent me a website asking if it's possible to create this interaction where you have a sticky navigation bar that changes states as you scroll through the page. And additionally, you can click on these individual menu items to actually scroll down or up the page. In this video, we will be trying to figure this out together because I have no idea if this is possible. This seems very complicated, if not outright impossible to do in Figma. So let's just dive in and find out together. So here's just a couple of screenshots to actually use this as a guide. As you can see, we have a navigation bar that starts right here, not at the top. And as you scroll through the page, first of all, this navigation bar sticks to the top. That's no problem, thanks to the new sticky interaction that we have in Figma. But then it also changes states as you scroll through the page. So is that actually possible? So let me just start by creating a screen. So I'm gonna use the frame tool and create a frame that is 1440 points wide. Uh, I'm gonna call this screen and then uh, I am going to create a couple things. First of all, I'm gonna create a navigation bar as a component, which means that I'm going to create another frame that is also 1440 points wide. And the height and auto layout and all of that, that doesn't really matter because we are trying to figure out a specific interaction. So no need to make this super polished. So let me just select this sticky navigation bar and turn this into a component. Now I can actually use this component uh, on my screen frame and then I'm gonna just change the color so that you can see where it actually is. And just to quickly recap, the sticky scroll behavior ensures that when you have an object on the page and scroll through the page, when actually this object meets the top of your screen, it's gonna stay there. So if I go to scroll behavior under prototype and set the position to sticky, stop at top edge. Now, when I launch the prototype, this is what happens. We get an object, we get a page that we can scroll through, but as soon as this object meets the top line of our page, the, the top edge, it's gonna stay there, right? You cannot see it, but I'm still scrolling through. Let me just add something. Let's just add a big circle so that we can see that we scroll through the page move it towards the bottom. So yeah, now when I scroll through the page, you can see that um, you can see that it sticks to the top and then stays there as you scroll through the remainder of the page. So that functionality that is sorted, right? That has been established in my uh, previous video. So no need to actually worry about that. The difficult thing is gonna be figuring out this interact. First of all, when it's not being stuck to the top, it doesn't go all the way to the edges. But then when it is, it actually does go to uh, all the way to the edges. So that's gonna be challenge number one. Challenge number two is actually gonna be making this navigation bar change states. And I'm going to create multiple states, each for a uh, one of these sections. So that's gonna be another challenge. So based on what section you're in, this is gonna to have to be changed. So let me just select this component and create three more states, okay? So three more states. Uh, all of these are actually going to be white. So let me just change that to white. I am going to, yeah, why don't we add a shadow so that we can differentiate that from the background, right? So you can see where it actually is. That, a very subtle shadow. Then I'm going to just use my text tool and type in section one, SF Pro, let's say semi-bold or bold. Then I'm gonna center this and just place a bunch of these things across my component, section two, section three, and section four, right? And then I'm gonna take all of these four, copy, command C, select the remaining ones, command V to paste them into across all of these variants. Then I'm gonna use my rectangle tool and create a blue rectangle. That is going to be our signalizer. This is going to highlight our active state. So just to mimic what we have here, right? That's a similar thing. Then I'm gonna use this again, copy, select all of these and then paste. And what I'm going to do in each of these states, I'm going to move this rectangle to be below section that it's supposed to highlight. So we get this essentially, that's what we get. Four individual states. As you can see, we now have the first one. So when I scroll through the page, right? I have this right here. And then when I scroll further through the page, it sticks on the top. 
that's awesome. That's great and exactly what we need. But now if we actually use our text tool and create a headline called section one, I'm going to use bigger headline, use that right here, section one, but then there's going to be of course section two and then section three, three and also four, right? So we're going to have four sections similar to what we have on the header. So now this is what we get, right? Section one, section one, two, three and four, except this navigation bar should be on the top. So command option right bracket now it actually behaves the way it's supposed to so we have something right here let me just create a section that's above this navigation bar make it blue like this maybe a bit darker okay so this is the section above the headline above the navigation bar then when i scroll it sticks to the top and then as I go through these sections, you can see that uh, we can scroll through with this being on the top. Okay, so now how do we convince this sticky navigation bar to change as we go through these sections? How could we actually do this? And remember, I have no idea if this works. We are just figuring this out together. So I have one suspicion, right? I think we could do this. I think we could duplicate this. So this screen two would be where this navigation bar is actually in its second active state, right? And then what we should do, I think, is create these objects that will represent, each of these will represent the section, right? So this one will represent the section number one and this one will represent section number two. And I think we could just take these, copy, paste, and at this point, I think we could just take, first of all, let me, let me just take all of this, command C, screen two, command V. Oops, forgot to select the screen, screen two, right? So we get two identical pages with identical interaction, but one of those has section two set as the state for this navigation bar. So my suspicion here is that we could use this rectangle to then go to prototype and connect this rectangle to the second page. And what we would do is on mouse enter, right? Mouse enter, we would navigate to screen two and we would get instant, an instant interaction. And this, very important, we would preserve scroll position, all right? So now let's see what the result looks like with this. I am scrolling through, oh, forgot to set this towards the very top. So again, command option left bracket, brilliant. As I scroll through the page and then I hover into the section number two, you can see that it switched over to section number two, right? So that's great. But now we are stuck at section two and we wanna be able, as we go through these individual sections, to actually move back into section one, right? We, I mean, we are no longer in section two. We need this to reflect that fact. And as we scroll through the remainder of the page, you can see that we, we are stuck on this page. So we need to create two more screens. So two more screens, screen three, screen four. Now we know that when you hover over section two, you go to screen two, but this should be the case for all of these screens, right? So I'm gonna select both of these, section two rectangles in screen three and four, and then connect those, both of them, to this screen, right? And it's not gonna be on click, but it's gonna be mouse enter, right? Mouse enter, navigate to screen two. So we have sorted out the interaction where you actually move into the screen two, it appears to be the case, right? And you move into a version where this is highlighted. Now we need to take care of the remainder of all these areas. Okay, so I am going to just select all of these section ones and then connect them to the first page, right? And that would be mouse enter, navigate to screen, instant, preserve scroll position. Same with section three. I'm gonna select these rectangles and all of them connect to screen three. Again, mouse enter, navigate to screen three, instant, preserve scroll position. Then I'm gonna select the fourth one, all of them connect, all of them into section four. And I'm gonna make sure that we have mouse enter, navigate to screen four, instant preserve scroll position. Now let's actually test this out, how this behaves. We need to specify as well that screen three has variant three and screen four has variant four so that it actually corresponds 
four and four. It corresponds with these, you know, with what page we are currently on. Let's test this out. I start at the beginning of the page, scroll down, then my mouse enters the section two. I'm on section two. And then my mouse enters section three and I'm in section three, section four. So that works, that's nice. And also when I go back, that works as well. But the thing is, let's just try, because as you can see, this is a problem, right? And I think we actually won't be able to get any closer because um, there is no better way to do this that I'm aware of. We, we're gonna have to deal with the fact that as we go back and forth with the mouse, that we actually, uh, this state is being switched. All right, so that's a trade-off that we have to accept. But the thing is, if you actually just present this to your client and you just keep scrolling through the page and you position your mouse in the, in the correct location, I think you should be able to get this behavior which actually looks as, uh, looks quite convincing in my opinion. And now uh, the thing is let's just try and make this interactive so let's try and actually set up the interaction so that when you click each of these sections you just scroll to that section let's try that so let's select section 2 and connect that to section 2 headline on click scroll to section 2 and the offset the vertical offset is going to be let's do minus 120 and it's going to be animates and let's actually try if if that if the offset is sufficient. So section two, yep, that appears to be functional. So that's section two. And then we're gonna select section three, scroll to section three, minus 120, and then finally section four. And we're gonna have to do this on each of these pages. So section one goes to section one, on click, scroll to section one, minus 120, section two scrolls here as well, minus 120, section three goes here, on click, scroll to section three, minus 120, and section four. We have to keep the offset because then uh, the headline would be hidden behind this header, right? So that's why we need to do this. So finally, section one, minus 120, section two, connect, minus 120, section three, and so on and so forth. And here it is. So let's recap. What do we have here? So each of these rectangles that you can see here, they point to the specific section that you have specified right here to the specific state of this header navigation menu uh, with the mouse enter interaction, right? So that's on each of those. So the third one goes to screen three, fourth one goes to screen four, and that goes for all of these screens, right? Except for three, section two on screen two, because that would point to itself and no need to do that. So that's the first interaction that we set up. And then also what I did is on each of these screens, I selected this menu item and connected that to the corresponding header, right? And I also added this offset and made it animate so that you can actually scroll down to a specific section. Let's test this out, okay? Let's test how this works. I should be able to click this and go to section four. And that's the case. But there's a delay with this, this state switching, right? And as you can see, we also get this behavior, but that's just a trade-off that I think we will have to accept. And then I can unclick on section three and go to section three, section two, and I'm in section two, section. And then we forgot to prototype section one in the first section, so that's Let's do that. Section one goes to section one minus 120. But otherwise, as you can see, it all works, okay? But there's just a delay with, uh, with this interaction where you actually, it doesn't behave precisely as we would need, but I think it's pretty close. So I can now click on section two, go here, section one, go here. And then also additionally, as I scroll through these sections, it changes states. That's great, right? So we are pretty close. Let's think about one more thing. So is it actually possible to make it so that when this isn't stuck to the top, that it doesn't go all the way to the edges? I don't think that's possible, to be honest. I don't think we can do that. Yeah, so it looks like I don't have any smart ideas about how to actually make this work with this width change, but I think we could just take a quick moment to adjust all of these rectangles to make the interaction smoother. I think we could move this into the background. So command option left bracket on all of these. And then I think that we could extend all these rectangles to actually go uh, meet at the top with its corresponding headline. Okay, so 
like this on the second section. Third section would go like this approximately. And then fourth one would go here as well. And additionally, what I think we could do is select all of these all of these are rectangles and then actually make them invisible so actually transparent and uh, if these are not going to be visible it's going to be even more convincing so let me actually test this interaction and see if if that's better right so section one and then section two section three and four for, right so it all depends on where you actually keep your mouse if you keep your mouse at the very bottom of the screen the interaction it's is not going to make much sense uh, it changes to section 2 when I keep my mouse in the bottom right corner so that's the limitation of this prototype but when I keep my mouse at the top of the page it behaves as we need right so it all depends on where you actually keep your mouse keep that in mind as you present this prototype type to your client and uh, also keep in mind that you might get some weird janky behavior but I think this is about the closest we can get to a sticky nav bar interaction with changing states uh, like this right so of course you could then populate all these sections with actual content so you would get like maybe images or, or text right uh, you would then go about designing this actually so that it looks um, legit this is just a placeholder just basically a template all of these would be like full with content and it would actually look quite convincing yeah, so yeah, that's it. As I said, I had no idea if this was gonna work, but uh, we can make this work to some extent. I think I'm not aware of a technique to actually make this work even better. But if you guys do, if you're actually aware of something that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments. I would love to learn this and I think others would appreciate that too. Many thanks to my viewer Paul who suggested this interaction to actually find out if that's, if that's possible. So thank you Paul for this. So yeah, this is it. Thanks for tuning in today. Leave a like if this video helped you. Leave a comment if you have any other questions or suggestions and I will see you in the next one.